Excellent. Thank you, Romney. You know, I, I would like to be in your position where I could get some time off during load shedding. You know? <laughs> Unfortunately, on my end of the scale, my, my telephone just rings off the hook when it's load shedding. So, you know, thank you. Firstly, I'd like, like to say thank you for the opportunity and thank you for all those taking the time to join us today. So by way of introduction, my name is Vishay Ravipal. I'm an electrical engineer by profession, specializing in energy and carbon reduction strategies using low cost, high return opportunities and energy management best practices. As my current role, I am the head of renewable energy at APSA and I'm responsible for the sector's strategy, customer value proposition and achieving the growth targets aligned to this sector. Amongst my various focus areas that promotes our shaping role in society, Renewable energy definitely stands out as, an, as a big opportunity for us. As you heard from many of the participants around the table today, you know, having access to energy opens up so many opportunities. And obviously, from a country perspective, it's actually a constraint in terms of progressing as well as our GDP. So I'm just, it's, obviously, we don't use utilize Zoom that often. So please bear with me because I'm going to try and get my presentation up on the screen. Third generation owner of the estate in Sedapal, about 40 minutes from Cape Town. Save is a mixed farming operation. We started off many years ago with my late grandfather as a wine producer, grape grower and wine producer, and then branched out into tourism. About 35 years ago, we got into cheese to enhance the tourist offering at Fairview to give the consumer a cheese and wine pairing and a tasting. We continually try and get new people into our brand. And the brand is quite dynamic because I've got two aspects to it. I've got cheese and I've got wine and now we're introducing meat as well. And we're also doing bread and bakery. So the whole holistic package is something that really resonates as far as products are concerned and consumers also resonate with this field to fork or farm to plate type of concept what we're trying to promote. I've been very fortunate to be blessed with a very good banker and she's been part of our business for the last 10 years and uh, she actually introduced me to the suppliers of the solar power and walked the road with me and with the company. Obviously there were a couple of options, we could have looked at wind turbines, which is still on the back burner, there's still a consideration in the future. The problem with the wind, the sporadic nature of the wind in the area, sun is far more reliable than wind, so then we decided let's do the low hanging fruit first and go for solar. Obviously the operation is a very high energy requirement. The total requirements on the farm is one megawatt, was split roughly 50-50 between cheese and wine. We obviously looked at renewable energy and electricity generation but at that stage it was very costly and I hung back a bit and watched what was happening in the market and I saw the price of these installations going down and banks like APSA came with very good solutions to finance packages to finance the installation which made it more and more attractive and I think after about four years of investigation we finally decided to put pen to paper and get the installation done. When I started at Fairview, which is now unfortunately 41 years ago, we didn't have much uh, going for us. We were in the backwaters, uh, soil and the, the farm as it was then is not very high potential. And I scratched around and thought, what is my biggest asset I have? And in those days, I had 17 people working with me. And I decided the 17 people is my biggest asset. Let me invest in the people. And slowly the 17 grew to the five, 600 people today. And that is by, through the investment in people and the quality of people South Africa actually do, we actually do possess. We've got the most amazing human resources in this country. All diamonds just need to be polished and feel part of something that works as a family business. And I think that has been our biggest success. 
think one cannot sit back and just watch things deteriorate. You actually have to get going and try and make a difference and change the way people think and change people's lives around you. And one way of doing that for sure is taking charge of your own energy requirements. I hope this is the first step of us becoming, most probably in the next 10 years, completely independent. I would like to see that happening. Be very bullish. If we weren't bullish, you will never be a farmer. I can promise you that. Be very optimistic and stay optimistic. I think it's imperative that uh, farmers in general are very resourceful in South Africa. I think South Africa is blessed with some of the most resourceful farmers in the world, okay? And I do believe they must jump on this opportunity to become energy sufficient and try and do as much of this as possible and as far as we can get further and further from the grid and be self-reliant in the future. So I hope you enjoyed that. So given the fact that, you know, we always talk about load shedding and tariff increases, but having renewable energy solutions on your site makes you resilient to those, but it also had so much other benefits. I mean, if you look at from where they started off with close to 17 employees to now where they are in terms of close to five to 600 employees. And they've also opened up a facility from a wine tasting perspective where there's a restaurant on site as well. So how do we as APSA promote and create an enabling environment when it comes to these systems. So a lot of what we do is not just on the financing side because we know we're very good at it, but it's, you know, in terms of providing thought leadership to our clients. And like I've mentioned in my introduction, I'm an engineer by profession. So we help our clients from an advisory and technical knowledge perspective in terms of promoting these types of installations for their business. And we take a holistic view on their business in terms of what would be the best solution for them. Apart from that is, we've also heard in the conversation today that some individuals were looking at installing these systems at their home. So we do have options in terms of financing you. If you have an APSA bond, we have an option, which we call a re-advance. So for instance, just to give you some background, what is a re-advance? So let's say you've got a property finance with us for your bonds with EPSA, and you've got a 20-year bond which you've paid in close to five years. So the equity that's sitting in that bond can be utilized for financing this project. Alternatively, if you do not have enough equity in your bond, we can offer you a further advanced solution, which is given the fact that five years ago, your property was valued at a million rand, and in today's day and age with property value increasing, which could be close to about 1.3 million, we can then finance you with a gap of 300,000 grand for the uh, installation. But we can unpack it in much more detail and I'm happy to share information on how these various options work. But the next one that I'm gonna to talk to you about is how does businesses finance these systems? And we have a product which we call the Green Asset Finance. So the Green Asset Finance is a market leading product, given the fact that we can finance anything between five to 10 years. And I'll talk about the 10 years just now, but over the five to seven years, the go-to product is Green Asset Finance. We can finance up to 100%, meaning that there's no deposit required. And the beauty part about our product is that we view the assets very differently from normal commercial assets, whereby this asset is viewed as a cash flow generating asset. And by saying that, we do not ask for any security when we finance these, because the, basically our security comes from the comfort that these systems are cash flow generating. And by saying that, is we take the following necessary steps to ensure that our clients get the solution that works for them. So from a technical advisory perspective, is we will ask our clients to provide us with their proposal that they are considering, and we do the following. We simulate that installation, so, and we compare that to the client's consumption to see whether it meets the client's requirements. And because we are the leaders in finance in these projects, we have benchmarked the line to the various types of installations, be it a grid type, off-grid or hybrid installation. And if it's not within our benchmarks, then there's red flags raised 
so that we can advise or understand why those costs are higher than our benchmark. Because, I mean, obviously, as a duty of care for our clients to ensure that they get the best value for their money. And if it's not within those benchmarks, obviously, we need to delve in deeper to understand why. And there could be reasons for that, such that clients install systems on carport and include their carport buses into the cost of the system. They, some clients put up private networks. And obviously, you know, those comes with the additional cost as well. Apart from that is we look at the equipment because this is a long-term investment for many of our clients such that these systems can generate in excess of 20 years of electricity. So we ensure that the products that they've installed or the equipment that they installed meets our requirements as well as then doing a complete due diligence on the installer. And you can understand that this sector has progressed over the years and there's almost almost every second individual you speak to wants to venture into the space. But we have obviously a responsibility to ensure that the installers that our clients utilize are reputable. They have the necessary years of experience as well as references to go along with those. And then lastly, like we've mentioned to you earlier, the regulatory requirements that need to be abided by. And that's basically how we can finance and that's my presentation for today. And thank you all for the time. And I'm not sure if there's any questions that we uh, have on this platform that I can address. Thank you.